a framework for your Excel learning. Yes, the 72 learning outcomes that you need to be a competent Excel user. I've laid them out for you in seven minutes and two seconds. Let's get started. Okay, first let's talk about basic Excel usage and first formulae. Now you might be surprised by a few of these, but here's the first thing is you've got to learn. You've got to learn how to input numbers in a spreadsheet without using the mouse, just using the keyboard. Then learn basic arithmetic formally. That means addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Then learn how to use the keyboard, not the mouse, to build a formula and then start using keyboard shortcuts. Then you've got to learn how to plan a spreadsheet layout on pen and paper, use basic formatting techniques and use paste special if you just want to paste formally, for example, or just paste in formats from a cell. Then you've got to know how to use the powerful sum formula, using absolute references, those dollar signs, what do they mean? Create a percentage figure, very routine thing to do in data analysis in Excel. Then create a chart, edit a chart and use conditional formatting. I suggest you start with column charts, usually the easiest to understand. Reformat a spreadsheet, make it look better, delete rows and columns and create a simple dashboard look. Next, let's talk about connecting Excel formally together to model the real world in terms of input, process and output. Data validation is so important in Excel. Number 17, learn to create a drop down menu. Number 18, learning to work across sheets. Formula building when you're using two or more sheets can be so difficult. You've got to start early. Number 18, learning to work across sheets. Then into our Excel modeling formula, creating a V lookup formula, one of the most popular Excel formulae, super powerful. Number 19, there it is. Then creating a match formula, maybe in contrast to V lookup, you never heard of match, nobody knows about match. It's a great facilitator of other formulae. That's why I love it. And then 21, learning to merge cells. You shouldn't be doing it all the time, but doing it sparingly can be really helpful in Excel. Then 22, one of my favorites, the offset formula. Again, little known, super powerful, also important in VBA. That's why we learn it early. Number 22, then 23 and 24, the if formula completes our set of four Excel modeling formulae. Then number 24, using some more advanced conditional formatting techniques. So now let's suppose you've got a data set and you just want to analyze it. How would you do that? Basic skills and concepts. Well, first you've got to understand there's steps to work through in data analysis. So what are those steps? Number 26, the difference between qualitative, which is basically words and quantitative data, which is essentially numbers. 27, the difference between discrete and continuous numerical data. 28, understanding the concept of dispersion, how spread out is the data number 29 understanding measures of central tendency specifically mean and median averages the differences between those then we've got our data analysis formula here they are the count a formula max and min formulae the standard deviation formula that's our measure of dispersion and then the mean and median formulae our main measures of central tendency more powerful formulae frequency formula allows us to analyze continuous numerical data prepare it for a column chart and then that's what we do in number 35 create a column chart to visualize the continuous data then with 36 we've got to sort data sort on more than one column a multi-level sort then we've got to filter data number 39 subtotal formula there are alternatives but a good formula to know subtotal some more formally the, the new unique formula allows us to remove duplicates the sum if formula and the average if formula allow us to do single criteria data analyses and then number 43 a partial absolute reference if we have a single dollar sign what does that mean and then multiple criteria data analysis using sum ifs and average ifs and then creating a chart with multiple series in. So looking at multiple columns at the same time. And finally, my absolute favorites, the super powerful D sum, D average, and D count formally coming in at number 47. Now, if we can control how data comes into Excel, we can avoid a lot of those problems later with non-clean data. Let's have a look at data input. Number 48, you've got to analyze your data input requirements before you get started. Then what about some cool features for data validation in Excel? You can create a custom error alert. If people don't put the right value in, you can tell them in a customized way. You can even create an input message, number 50, before somebody inputs something into a cell, we can tell them 
what they need to put in. Number 51, use the if formula to give a customized message to help the user know how to use the conditional formatting rules manager because conditional formatting can take up a lot of memory in Excel. And then 53, know to some extent how dates work. Very tricky, I'm still struggling with that one. But number 53, you've got to start understanding how dates work in Excel. How would we format a sheet for data input? Some helpful basic formatting, number 54, and then protecting sheets and cells so that the users can't accidentally mess up formally and they're directed to the cells they need to go to do their data input. And finally, my favorite section, how can we automate those time-consuming tasks in Excel at the click of a button? So first, you've got to know how to set up your system for Excel VBA to make the developer tab visible. For example, number 56, number 57, let's write a macro in Excel VBA, write a short macro. Number 58, insert a button to make that macro run. Number 59, the concept of A equals B, such a basic concept in Excel VBA. We've got to know that. Then can we put a value in a cell using A equals B? Can we move data around using A equals B? And then can we use a cell entry with VBA to transfer data? Number 62, number 63, what's a variable? It's just a place to store information. How can we use it? Number 64, declare one of those variables. And number 65, store a value in one of those variables. Number 66, use the powerful dot cells referencing technique. So powerful for position control in Excel VBA and then combine it with a variable for powerful position control. Position control two, number 68, use the offset method again to control position. Number 69, understand the two main variable types we use in Excel, Excel VBA, integer and string variable. Number 70, create a loop. A loop allows us to repeat a set of instructions any number of times, allows us to get so much work done. A basic for next loop, number 70 and 71, 72, use dot excel up or the variance of it to dynamically position locate and size data and number 72 combine at least a few of these techniques together to create a powerful excel vba macro